Welcome back. In this lecture, I'd like to zip through some of the NSA's controversial surveillance programs under Executive Order 12333. Recall that most intelligence operations aren't regulated by ECPA or FISA and just fall under 12333. I couldn't possibly cover everything that's been leaked or declassified in just one lecture. So I'm going to touch on some of the greatest hits. The first is bulk internet surveillance. As I mentioned in the last lecture, there's ambiguity about whether the NSA is engaged in bulk internet surveillance with collection points inside the United States. In partnership with foreign agencies, the NSA undoubtedly has access to bulk internet data with collection points outside the United States. The X key score system enables NSA analysts to effectively query bulk internet content. It's distributed at collection points across the globe. I should note that there's some ambiguity about whether X key score is used just for foreign executive order 12333 collection or also for domestic section 702 or transit authority collection. As raw internet data flows into X key score, it's parsed so it can be more easily searched and displayed. And a massive amount of data is temporarily stored. The NSA stores several days of content from across huge swaths of the public internet. It keeps metadata for even longer. Much of the largest collection occurs in the UK. Such voluminous collection, in fact, that specially scaled installations of X key score were required. Analysts who use X key score can see all sorts of online activities. Note that many of these activities involve American businesses. Before Facebook began encrypting its messaging traffic, for instance, X key score could pick out chats between users. Similarly, before Google began encrypting its Maps website, X key score could analyze that traffic too. Pretty much any web traffic is fair game. Here's a search on the BBC website, for instance. So, bulk internet surveillance is very real. It may just only go on outside the United States. The next practice I'd like to highlight is surveillance against networks exclusively used by American businesses. The NSA, in partnership with GCHQ, realized that communications between Google and Yahoo data centers weren't encrypted. That's because they were on private, leased telecommunications lines. So, the agencies began collecting communications in bulk between data centers. That practice raises some very serious Fourth Amendment issues. At the time of recording, though, neither company has initiated litigation. Another surveillance practice I'd like to call your attention to is nationwide phone surveillance. In the Bahamas, the NSA had been collecting audio on every call. The local government had no idea the NSA was surreptitiously using the DEA's surveillance equipment. The NSA had similarly been collecting audio on all calls in Afghanistan and metadata on all calls in Mexico, Kenya, and the Philippines. We've sure come a long way from Title III protections. A final practice that I'd like to highlight involves malware delivery. Here's the idea. Suppose that a target is logging into Yahoo. The NSA recognizes its target and kicks off a process to install malware. In the next step, the malware delivery starts just about the same time Yahoo is going to respond. So the NSA's data races Yahoo's data back to the target. If the NSA wins the race, the target's device contacts an NSA server. And if there's a working exploit against the device, it's sent back. 
So that's how the NSA has converted its bulk internet surveillance into an effective platform for targeted delivery of malware. I'd close by emphasizing that this lecture just scratched the surface. There's much more to learn about Executive Order 12333 programs, and I'd greatly encourage you to read more. In the NSA's own words, they're trying to sniff it all, know it all, collect it all, process it all, exploit it all, and partner it all. I'm not so sure about that last one. But super villainish hyperbole aside, the NSA undoubtedly has some very expansive surveillance programs under Executive Order 12333. And recall that those programs are not subject to FISC oversight, and they receive limited congressional oversight. This was, I'm sad to say, the last main lecture of the course. In the final part, I'm going to share some concluding thoughts, as well as some special guests.